Hello everyone, my name is Vili. I'm a worship leader here at City Hill Church. Just want to extend a warm welcome to you if you're joining us for the very first time today. City Hill Church is a church of many nations and many different cultures. So we have an, an incredible diversity in, here in our community and it's just a great feeling to be part of this uh, wonderful family of God. And we just want to extend that invitation to you right now. So if you haven't been joining us or you, if it's your first time hearing about City Hill Church, you are welcome to join us every Friday. We, um, we connect to each other through Zoom at 10 a.m. UAE time. You can find the login details in our link below. And please join us, send us a message or any questions you might have, and we will get back to you. Now, as a church, we've been going through the Book of Psalms uh, in this season. Today we're going to look at Psalms 96 and Mark is going to take us through this wonderful passage in the book of Psalms. So please stay tuned in for that. We also have a very special video today featuring our very own men here at City Hill. So please also stay tuned for that. It's going to be an exciting one. We hope you enjoy your time with us today. And now let's set our hearts and minds towards God for a time of praise and worship. I dare not trust the sweetest phrase, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but only trust in Jesus name Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the same love through the storm he is Lord Lord of all when darkness seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace And stormy gale, my anchor holds within the way. Oh, my anchor holds within the way. Yeah, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the same.
I come from a remote village in Kenya. In my culture, to be a man is to be a warrior who protects the family possessions from thieves and cattle rustlers. Men are supposed to be strong farmers who till the land and provide for their families. We like beer, the footy, the cricket, the beach, uh, generally outdoors kind of things. We're meant to be larrikins. Take it easy, no worries, mate. In our culture, we work hard, eat hard, especially parota and beef fry. In the Philippines, man loves to hoops and to cook. As an Indian man, we are culturally programmed to discuss, digest, and dissect our food. Sure like our food spicy. <laughs> In our culture, man has to be hardworking, honest, truthful and above all god fearing and on sundays we love our football you have to be a good hunter so that you bring food on the table and that makes you a responsible man in my culture men enjoy this Growing up to be a man has always been about, if you don't play sport, you're not a real man. Um, big boys don't cry. I think that's probably part of the reason why we as men are so unwilling or unable to, to share our feelings, to share what we're going through, to share our struggles with others, because we don't want to be perceived as being weak. You want to be perceived as being strong. But it wasn't until I encountered scripture where I begin to see in the Bible the likes of David and others, men who go to battle and with wars 
But at the same time, there are men who are able to bow on their knees and worship God in weakness. And it wasn't until I came and encountered Christ that I actually realized that there's something about men being vulnerable and being themselves before God that is powerful and speaks volumes to who God is. And I just want to invite you to this time on the 12th of March, where we actually are going to be exploring this area of mental health for men, because I've seen that in scripture, but I don't see that in our culture. So I'm inviting you, men of City Hill, invite your friends as well. Let's come and really wrestle with what it means to be men and some of the things that we are dealing with and coping with, especially during this hard time of COVID. God bless you. I hope to see you soon. Hello, City Hill, and whoever you are and wherever you're joining us from around the world, welcome to our continuing series on the Psalms. My name is Mark, and today we're going to be looking at Psalm 96. Now, before we get into it, I'd like to ask you if you could have a Bible handy. And I know we are a church of many nations, many languages, many tribes. And so if you actually have a Bible in your own native language, probably the language that you pray in, uh, I'd love it if you could get that today. Just to have, I obviously won't be trying to reference your language throughout, but it might just help you to look at, at the language you're most comfortable with. Uh, at this passage today. Hopefully you've got that or you just had to pick it up on your phone and uh, we're going to start by reading Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations his marvellous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise, for he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Now, you might have noticed the tone of this is a bit different to the last couple of psalms we've looked at. Uh, we looked at Psalm 23. Nikki took us through that. And last week, Fusi did Psalm 121. And they were more psalms that seemed to be looking at God as a protector, uh, a guide, um, a refuge in trouble. This takes a different tone of really just outright praise to our God. And it, it had me thinking a bit more about what actually is a psalm. So, I thought I'd ask you, have you thought about what is a psalm? Now, all these psalms in the book of Psalms are, well, they're poetry. Um, they're not a strict story like we get in the Gospels about who Jesus is. Um, they're poetic, but they have many different styles to them, whether they are seeming like a personal prayer, uh, often of King David, as this one is. This is a prayer from David. Um, but they're often praise, like this one. Sometimes they might be lamenting uh, and more sombre. But all the while, we know that they are generally written not just for the person who is writing them, but they're to be sung. Um, often it says for the choir. Uh, and so it's for communal worship or communal prayer 
uh, and praise of God. And this probably should have occurred to me before, but it's kind of unusual that this is a whole book of the Bible that is praise to God, prayers to God, but we also know the Bible is from God. So it's God's word talking back to God. Uh, it kind of confused me a little bit when I really thought about that. Uh, I normally read the Psalms kind of to help me help me pray and guide me and, and give me the words to speak to God. And that's what we're really going to be looking at today. We know that from, uh, from 2 Timothy, all scripture is God-breathed. It is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So with that in mind, I think this is really God showing us how he wants us to relate to him. So the way I'm going to look at that is firstly, how should we see God uh, through this? Secondly, why is this outright praise coming from David? What's the context of where he wrote this? Uh, because it's kind of a bit, bit unique in perhaps contrast to some of the other Psalms. Uh, and then thirdly, how do we go about that afterwards? What, what does that mean to us? So firstly, an example of our expression to God. I don't often talk to people in, in the language that David uses here. Most of us are not all that poetic. Most of us are not songwriters. So this language of praising God in our prayer is probably not that easy. Now, during the recent homeschooling, one of the tools that our kids were given from a teacher, from the art teacher, was a YouTube channel that helped them learn how to draw. On this YouTube channel, there's, there's a dad, normally I think with one of his kids, and they pick something that they might want to draw, whether it's a car or a dinosaur or a truck. And the dad's drawing and giving instructions uh, to the child that's with him on how to draw this particular object. And that's what I think we're getting here. We're getting a model of how to do it. Now, normally the dad's the better artist and you can tell from the two paintings at the end or the, the drawings rather, you can tell one's better than the other. But by giving the step-by-step -step guide, we can follow along and you at home can learn to draw a pretty good dinosaur or a, a pretty good truck or whatever it is much better than you would have just trying to do it freehand on your own. And that's what I think this psalm is about for us. This is showing us how to come before God, this posture of praise, um, because our God is worthy of praise. And if you're like me, that's probably not in your, your normal language and how you talk to people. Uh, and so this is helping us and guiding us in, in how we can do that. And, of course, the other psalms like this are similar guides. We can use this to learn. This is how we come before God. He is worthy of praise. He is worthy of glory. And we, we should bring that praise to him. I know normally our prayers, well, my prayers certainly, can often just be thank you for what you've done for me, thank you for what you've given me, and please, I'm facing troubles, help me with this, help my friends with that. And so often we're asking God for things or thanking him for little things he's done. Uh, I know I often forget to put in this worship, this praise. You might also feel like worship is what you do at church when we, when we sing songs. And that's also what these psalms are doing. But you're unlikely to be writing songs that you sing on your own, and you're probably praying or hopefully praying more regularly. And we can include this in our prayers. We can be worshipping God, uh, as this says, day after day. Um, this should be something regular for us to be lifting up our eyes to God, to remember not just what he's done, not just what we would like him to do, but just who he is, who, how amazing he is, uh, and how great he is, his splendor and his glory and his strength. So I see this as a great guide there from God's chosen leader, King David, um, who is generally held up, not without fault, but as probably Israel's greatest king and greatest leader, 
um, as you know, the Bible looks back at him. So this is a godly man giving us a fantastic template of how we can come before God and praise him. So that's the first point. How do we see God and how do we come before God and, and adopt that attitude and that posture of, of praising God? So that brings us to the context. Why is King David at this moment so full of praise for God? What has he done? To, to elicit this moment from the king. Well, this psalm actually appears almost exactly uh, in 1 Chronicles 16. So what is the scenario here? This is not long after David has actually become the king after Saul's death. And he has brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. He has brought it to its resting place where where the ark is meant to live uh, and where Solomon will go on to build the temple. Not only has he brought the ark of the covenant to Jerusalem, but to do this, first he had to sort of unite all the tribes of Israel uh, under his kingship. Then he had to go and defeat the Jebusites who were occupying Jerusalem And then he also had to fight off the Philistines. So he's had a couple of significant victories here, taken Jerusalem, and then he's brought the Ark of the Covenant to its resting place. So really, that is why I think at this moment we get such a shout of praise towards God and his glory, his strength and his greatness, because he has just won these victories for his people Israel. You know, it's like in the sporting movie where the team that's been struggling gets there and they win and always they play, we are the champions. But this has a little twist, right? God has won this victory here, but in this victory, going back to our how we look at God, David has not chosen this moment to glorify himself or the mighty warriors that joined him and helped win these, these battles. He uses this moment to praise God because he knows these are not his own victories. These are victories from the Lord. Uh, And that's what he's really emphasizing here. Along the way, he's not just had these military victories, but he's also defeated their gods because generally these different nations worshipped different gods. Uh, You might remember this particularly clearly in the the story of Elisha and the prophets of Baal, where Elisha you know, made two altars and told the prophets of Baal, call on your God to, to light the fire, to sacrifice this bull to, to Baal. And they danced around all day and nothing happened. And Elisha prayed to God and he lit the fire of Elisha's sacrifice. Similarly here, the Philistines and the Jebusites Their gods had nothing on Yahweh, the Lord, the God of the Israelites. Uh, And you'll notice in this passage, it says the other gods are worthless or the other gods are idols. And and even the the kind of original language might not have even given it really the credit of being an idol, something that might be recognized as a god. But just these gods are are worthless things. They're, They're nothing. And Uh, They were thrown into the fire by David. Um, These gods were utterly defeated. Uh, And that, I think, is really uh, an important part to remember in that the Lord God won the victories here for David, and that elicits this praise. Similarly, we know that Jesus Christ has won the ultimate victory for us. We saw he was on the cross. He looked defeated, but then... Three days later, he rose again. He had utterly defeated death. And that is the ultimate victory. That was his purpose. That is the the ultimate victory over sin for all of us. So similarly to David's uh, praise for the God of the the Israelites, our God deserves our praise and uh, this sort of lavish language of, uh, of exaltation for his victory over sin and death uh, and for our salvation. Um, All other gods have nothing on our God in this instance. 
And I'll, I'll just take that moment to, to deviate and say, I know sometimes it's hard when you're in a conversation with someone else that says, ah, oh, you know, religion, they're all the same. Or, or you all worship the same God. He just has a different name. But, but here, that's clearly not the case. The other nations have their gods, but they do not stand up to the victory against Yahweh. They do not stand up like Jesus stood up um, amongst the crowds uh, to be judged and then to actually show the victory that he can, deserve, he can win. No other God has done that. No other God has put themselves in a place um, to be defeated but then come out victorious. Only Jesus shows us this conquering, this victory over sin and death. So when someone says all gods are the same, well, no other God has claimed to die for our sins and and to come overcome death and show that power um, and that power and glory uh, that Jesus has done. Uh, No other um, belief or religion says, actually, it's not about what you do. It's all about what God has done for us. Uh, in every other religion, it's about what you can do. So our beliefs and our religions are, are incomparable because it's all about Jesus and what he has done for us in winning that victory. And so the character of our God and the victory of our God is entirely different. Here, our God wins the victory over the other nations and over their gods, but we also have seen that victory from Jesus the ultimate victory over sin and death for us. So then, what is our response to this victory from Jesus, from our God who is so great? Well, as the passage says, we should praise him. We must sing his name day after day to all the nations. We must come before our God in praise, uh, in thanks and praise of his, his greatness and all that he has done, not just the the things daily in our lives, but of who he is, that he loves us, that he cares for us, that he has won uh, the victory for us. Just as David was so uh, excited and victorious in the moment um, of taking the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, we should come before the Lord in praise daily. Now, As I said earlier, it it kind of doesn't feel like how I normally talk to someone, but God is not just someone else. Normally when we talk to each other, I I certainly feel like humility is is part of an appropriate Christian character. And and I guess I know there's a difference between complimenting you and me being humble, but I I don't get too overt with my, my praise of you. But you are not God. God is worthy of praise. He, he doesn't have to be humble. Whenever glory is mentioned uh, in the Bible, it's his glory. We, we never have glory. Um, so we need to praise him. And by doing this regularly, it'll become easier. Uh, like any skill, uh, like the drawings I mentioned earlier, uh, practice will help. If you're trying to build your muscles, you have to go to the gym. Uh, make that a habit and do it regularly. Same with our, our prayer and our praise and how we come to God. I'm sure you've heard and you would know from your own experience that making a habit is hard. It, it takes diligence and perseverance to make something a habit, regular prayer, regular Bible, regular exercise, whatever that might be. It, it's hard to make that habit and, and much easier to break a habit. So we need to make this part of our regular daily habit. I know that since we've started this series, we've been given that uh, psalm reading guide uh, from church. And I've been trying to go through that. And I I find that a really helpful tool, like the guy on the the art videos showing us how to draw. I I feel like I can come to the psalms and use that as a guide uh, and incorporate that in, in my day and in my prayer. So let's make sure we we use that muscle regularly, um, make it a habit, 
and, and it will become easier and more natural. Um, maybe you'll, you'll turn into a songwriter or a poet um, with your, your lavish words of praise, using these examples from Psalms to help you. Uh, and by making it a regular habit, it will become easier and more part of your daily routine. Oh, I know it's not easy. Uh, it does take work. But I'm not going to say practice makes perfect, but practice makes consistent. The more we do something, uh, the more consistently we will do that, um, whatever the skill. Uh, I re remember recently the Australian Open uh, was being held in Melbourne in Australia and all these COVID restrictions had a lot of the tennis players stuck in their hotel rooms um, doing quarantine, uh, more than they were expecting because they had a close contact and all this sort of thing. But a lot of them were complaining that they weren't getting the practice they needed to maintain the level that they wanted to perform in a major tournament. That's fit, and that's the same for any skill. We need that regular practice to, to help us uh, maintain um, our skills. And I think that applies also here to our prayer and our praise of God, particularly if that's not something that comes naturally to you. I wanted to share with you a story of a family member of Katie's who passed away recently. Uh, he was an, an older relative uh, and he'd been suffering from dementia. But at his funeral that uh, we were just watching on Zoom, there was a video from, from the pastor of his church where he'd been meeting with him not too long ago where a lot of his, his conversation at the time really didn't seem very coherent. Um, even last Last summer, when Katie went to visit him, he could get lost in his front yard. But in this video, the, the pastor played at his funeral, despite his difficulties with conversation, he could still pray clearly. Obviously, this is something that's important to our Lord. He wants to hear from us, and we need to speak to him and give him that praise and that honour and that glory. And I feel certain that he could still speak to God because that is so important in his life. And I'm also pretty sure that he could maintain that not just as a gift from God, but because it was a regular part of his life. And so I want to encourage you with that as well, to make that regular part of your life because when difficult times come, this will be what you do. If it's that habit you've made, that skill you've maintained, through all seasons and all trials, you'll maintain the skill of prayer, but you will remember to glorify God. You'll remember how great he is, no matter what you're going through at that time. And so I think the most appropriate way that we can finish our time together is to read this psalm together. And this is why hopefully you have the, the passage in your own language um, so that you can really sing this, shout this, say this with praise and your eyes towards God and giving him the glory. And you can take this into your day, into your week, uh, and remember to look for this, help to keep this on your heart. And so let's finish our time together by reading from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among the peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. 
Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people in his faithfulness. Amen. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great
Thank you very much, Mark, for sharing the Word of God today and for the reminder about the importance of praise and worship towards God in our lives and how it should really be uh, a part of our daily routine. If you would like to respond to the preach or if you would like, if you have any prayer requests, please join us back again on Zoom today at 12.15 um, with the same login details and we will have a team there waiting for you and be willing to pray for you. So please join us back again on Zoom. We also hope you enjoyed um, our video featuring the men today. And please um, make sure to mark your calendars for Men Let's Talk that's going to be on Friday next week, 12th of March at 6 p.m. Dubai time. The login details will be down below. And if you're a man, please do join us. And if you're a, a, a woman, please invite your male friends, um, your spouse and and your brothers to join this very special occasion. And we will be joined by our friend, Dr. Tayo, who's gonna be sharing a lot of different things about men's mental health and the, about the importance of how we should be taking care of it, how, how we should be talking about it in this context that we live right now. We've set up a Facebook page event for it. So please do check out our Facebook page under events and make sure to share it and spread the word. Thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you have a wonderful time with us and we'll see you next week.